Hi, welcome to Inspiring People. My name is Mary Otto and I'm the host of the show and with me today is my guest Cindy Anderson. Welcome Cindy. Thank you. Nice to have you here. We've been wanting to get you on the show, so I'm glad we could find a time that you were available, available to do so. You uh, Why don't we start with having you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you were raised, sure. and what brought you to Detroit Lakes, things like that. Okay. Well, I was born in Sioux City, Iowa. Okay. Yeah, and I, I mean, it's okay to say that, that yeah. I'm from Iowa? Yes. I, <laughs> I, I only lived there six months. My father was in the military, so we moved around to a number of different communities. From, from Iowa, I went to... Uh, northern Minnesota for a while, uh, Grand Forks area in that too, and then also to Idaho. Spent five years in Idaho. Lived in Germany for three years. Oh, wow. Lived in Alaska. Um, lived in, again, northern Minnesota. All of that growing up. So I kind of lived all over, but what actually brought me to Detroit Lakes yes. was a U-Haul. <laughs> literally, I guess literally, you took that literally, literally. yes. Yeah. But as an adult, I mean, I lived, I grew up uh, for like, like 15 years of my teenage years and others, not that I was a teenager for 15 years, but I um, spent a lot of that growing up time between the summer of seventh grade and, um, and into adulthood in Alaska and then moved to Arizona for three years because I thought, you know, I never wanted to scrape another sidewalk or shovel a sidewalk uh -huh. or scrape a window uh -huh. and then realize that I miss the seasons. And I, I like, you know, when they said that they had rivers, I'd like there to be water in them. And I so see. <laughs> I wanted change in seasons, and so I decided to move back to northern Minnesota. Okay, and you've been here now for how long? My gosh, 20 years. 20 years, Absolutely. really. It's been that long. Well, you're well known in the community, and I think this will be just a great opportunity for people who don't know you mm -hmm. uh, to get to know you better, and also for people who already do know you and, and work with you uh, to have them see and hear again what you're, what you're all doing. Mm -hmm. So... Um, tell me a little bit, or tell the viewers a little bit about your professional life now. What uh, sure. projects you're working? You always have something going, <laughs> and uh, let's hear a few things sure. that you have going right now. Well, I'm a small business owner with my sister. We mm -hmm. have a company called Mosaic Consulting, and I do a lot of grant writing, strategic planning, evaluation work, things of that nature. She does. QuickBooks and bookkeeping services, full charge of bookkeeping. She's a QuickBooks Pro Advisor. My son is in the business. It's a family-owned business, mm -hmm. and he um, has a management information systems degree, and he does all the database design and management and that. And so it's it's great opportunity for us to be able to work together um, as a family. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, for 14 years, I worked as the director of the Lakes Crisis and Resource Center, uh, and a cause um, and an agency that's very near and dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. and, um, in fact, I'm doing some volunteer work with them right now in terms of a capital campaign um, looking at generating dollars to build a shelter. Um, there's a lead gift from a very generous person in the community, mm -hmm. um, some land that's been donated, and a shelter that will undoubtedly be a reality before too long, and it'll provide a critical service uh, for women and children who are suffering from or victims of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. So the Lakes Crisis and Resource Center is doing a great job, and it's an honor and a privilege to be able to work with them on mm -hmm. helping to get the shelter built. I also am, am active in the St. Mary's Innovus Health um, Organization, both as a member of the Board of Directors of the Integrated Health Services Board, uh, Systems Board, and also the incoming uh, foundation chair for the St. Mary's oh. Foundation. I've been on a number of committees within the foundation over mm -hmm. the years, but I will be the incoming, uh, we're transitioning right now. Kevin Mann's done a wonderful job in that position, and we're in, we've begun the process of transition, so I'll be taking over the lead of the foundation. Okay, and along with doing that as part of your business, I mm -hmm. think that's what you're saying, is, is what is it about Cindy Anderson that wants to be a part of just that mm -hmm. cause, the foundation and raising money for St. Mary's. Right, and those things are actually not a part of the business. They're, oh, they're, they're, okay. they're just, those are my volunteer efforts. Oh, okay. Just like my volunteer <laughs> efforts within the crisis center. Um, and, and partly because, I mean, I believe very strongly in that a small rural community that has a hospital system and a clinic system as strong as we have in Detroit Lakes, we need to do everything we can to not only maintain that, but to grow it. Okay. Um, and that, you know, when you want to, when we're looking at rural communities, I see that as part of economic development um, and just part of the, the quality of life in our community so that we can access those health services um, on a local basis. Mm -hmm. And anything that we can do to continue to grow the, the health care market um, is something that I think is good and benefits the citizens sure. of our community. So those are where you know, probably the bulk of my volunteer time goes between those, those two projects. But okay. I'm involved in other activities as well. And are you involved in some civic organizations? That seems to I me am, I remember that. Yes, too. I'm a Kiwanian, and I know that you were a Rotarian. 
period. Yes. But, <laughs> but we'll still, we'll but still continue but we, the discussion. But, you know, it's, it's the beauty of, of bringing all the people together. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm a Kiwanian and I am actually president elect of Kiwanis. Okay. And I currently serve right now as the chair of the Chamber Board of Directors. Good. Well, Dee, what do you what do you do in your spare time, Cindy? <laughs> well, I know you have other things that you like to do, and like oh, you said, absolutely. some of that was just volunteer work. Yeah, so, right. so on a given evening or during the week or on weekends, when you aren't doing one of those, what does Cindy Anderson like to do? I love to read. I love to cook. I love to bake, and I love to. We have four new kitties at our house. Um, we've had pets you know, all my life, and we just got, unfortunately, our last of four pets died um, not too long ago. They were geriatric. I mean, our cats were 19 and a half, 21 and a half, and 22 <laughs> years old. Um, and we had forgotten what it was like to, to have little kitties as mm -hmm. opposed to those. I mean, you forget when an animal is as old as ours were. Um, and then our dog, too, that uh, died at 13 years. So that's something that's new for us in our home. We, and one of the things that's very near and dear to my heart as well is the Humane Society. And you want to, you know, I work on trying to support those activities and do some volunteer work, you know, volunteer strategic planning mm -hmm. and things like that for organizations like mm -hmm. the Humane Society. Well, where do you think you got this desire to work um, like you do for mm -hmm. organizations and institutions and mm -hmm. so on, uh, whether it be as part of your work uh, that you actually do through your business mm -hmm. or just on a voluntary basis? Where mm -hmm. did where did that where did where that start? Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, my first real exposure to volunteerism was when I was 12 years old. I had a backyard carnival for Muscular Dystrophy Association, and I loved it. I loved the organizing part of it and putting together something and creating something that people could come to, that they did come to, and that they had fun at. And I loved being kind of in the producer role of that. Um, and then when I was in seventh grade and also at ninth grade and then again in, throughout high school, I lived in Alaska at a time when the pipeline was coming through and there weren't enough schools to keep up with the influx of people coming into the community. So I went on something called split shift. So I went to school from 6 a.m. to noon. My brother went from 12.30 to 6.30, and my sister went from 8.30 to 3.30. So we always had a lot of coming and going sure. you know, in our house. And I thought, you know, I saw a lot of kids making choices that I didn't agree with um, after school. And they had all day long. I mean, mm -hmm. they were done with school by noon. Mm -hmm. And I chose not to go the path that they were going down, and whether that had to do with any kind of drugs or other kind of behavior. That just wasn't something that was of interest to me. and so. I thought, but I have to do something with my time, and so I started doing volunteer work. Okay. And the first place I did formal volunteer work every day was um, at a place called Hope Cottage, where we, my job was to hold, feed, and, and help take care of profoundly retarded uh, children and adults. And then that led into doing fundraising work. And I, re I remember one day, uh, the, one of the people came and said, Cindy, can you, can you talk to some people about the Walk for Hope? It was a 28.6 mile walk. At that time, it was actually a 31.5 mile walk. And I said, sure, I could talk to them. What I didn't know was that it was a television station. I was 13 years old, and I thought, well, Okay, I can do this, and I did, and I found I liked it, and and I and I love the whole idea again of creating that event. When I was 16, I was a captain of one of the, the stations during that you know almost 30 mile walk, and I was at the dill pickle station. Well, great place. Great <laughs> we had, place, we had yes. five gallon buckets of dill pickles, and that's what we you know believe it or not, people really like that. So I thought you know what are we going to do with all these buckets? So I was selling the buckets. Um, along the way too and that was just another fundraiser for Hope Cottage so fundraising got in my blood um, at a very young age and really influenced how I how I do my work today. Well I think you uh, this has been such an enjoyable conversation and I think you have a lot more to tell us about <laughs> and a lot more things that people would like to know so I think we'll do a second part to this okay. interview Cindy and we'll uh, be back with that at another in next week. Mm -hmm.